Church of Christ for a Wednesday evening Bible study. Well, I so, yeah. And the, uh, the preacher was doing the, the teaching that evening, and he, he stands up there and he goes, Well, we got our sons over here, and we got a bunch of Yankees over here. <laughs> Remember that? Okay, our family matters. We have a few things to go over. First off, we want to welcome everybody here, especially any of the visitors. We appreciate you being with us this morning and worshiping such a great God. Uh, special day salutes. Have some happy birthdays. Valerie Fisher, Randy Moss's birthday is coming up. Uh, Anthony Rossi, uh, Maggie Phillips on 713. Uh, Mia Cummings on 714, Olivia Wood on 715, and we have a card that's going to go around right now for her. And we also have a card that's going around for Randy. So let's make it a point to, to sign that and maybe say a couple words on it. And a happy anniversary to Matt, Matt and Jessica Brown on 713. Uh, Primetime Morning tomorrow. <coughs> Prime time lunch tomorrow at Hometown Buffet at 2 o'clock. Uh, they should call it the Hometown Corral. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Songs of Light this evening. Let's all make it a point to be back here. We've got Rod Shelby coming in for our, our Songs yeah. of Light, and we've invited uh, several other people, <laughs> and even some other congregations, if they couldn't bring some people here. It'd be real sad if people showed up and we weren't here. So let's make it a point to be here. It's always great to have Rod leading singing and get to worship and praise God for another evening. We'll have some uh, finger foods and uh, probably order some pizza, I believe. Uh, Lads Leader meeting following our morning worship on the 23rd. Lads of Lead for uh, this coming year. And uh, Wednesday evening, if you're not attending this, you're missing out. Don't think that, hey, I missed a couple, so I... I won't be I won't be caught up. I won't you know I won't I'll miss out. I won't know where you're coming from, but it's a great study. Uh, uh, Daring Faith is called and uh, it's Randy Harris, what he does uh, Bob's kind of leading the discussion. He does a fantastic job with that. Shows a, a short video of Randy Harris and then we, we all talk about it and discuss it. And it's uh, it's pretty good. And sign up on a back table for a Terry tour, summer field trip. So make sure that the Roman Dad leaves this, this Saturday the 15th. Uh, we're going to leave from the building at 9 a.m. and should return right around 3 p.m. And Terry always does a great job with that stuff. And, uh, so let's all make a point to try to take part in that. Uh, okay, I have a, a note here. Uh, Portland Church of Christ family. On behalf of the family of Ina McQueen, that uh, thank you for your lovely flowers and all your thoughts and prayers. God bless each of you. Frank McQueen and John and Cindy Clark. It was uh, your grandmother that passed away. And uh, we're glad we were able to do something. And in our prayers, Randy Moss is still in uh, St. Elizabeth, the ICU. We definitely want to keep him in our prayers. He's had some short steps of progress, but he's still not out of good yet. We need to really keep him in our prayers and the whole family. Uh, Trudy Wood, she's now home. She had to go back to, to St. Joe's and she's, she's home again, so we still need to keep her in our prayers. Mike Collier, you know, we got an auto wreck. He's recovering from a bunch of broken ribs. Uh, Isa Holstein, uh, you know, she's still suffering from cancer. And uh, Burdette Stewart, also, we need to keep them in there. And just so many elements. Uh, I believe I got all the announcements. If I missed any, I'm sorry. Uh, let's go to our God. God and Father, as we gather today to worship praise and to honor you. We thank you for the avenue you've given us to be called your children and that avenue is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
And as we gather and remember his death, his burial, and his glorious resurrection, we're humbled before your throne that your love for us was that great, that you would give us this advent. And Father, we pray for all those on our prayer list, that you will be with them, that you will strengthen them, that you will encourage and uplift the families, that you will bless all those who are taking care of them. Father, we especially pray for Randy that you will heal him and that you will wrap your arms above around him and his family at this time and help us not only to pray for him but to step up and help out in any way that we can. We pray for Burdette Stewart that he will continue to receive his treatments and, and hear benefits from him. We pray for Trudy that you will be with her and help each one of us to help in any way we can with all those that are sick. We pray for all those who suffer the loss of loved ones that you will wrap your loving arms around them, that they will find the confidence and peace that can only be found in you. In Christ's name we pray. I have the good pleasure this morning of announcing uh, to you that John and Cindy Clark decided to place membership with us. And it's not been a hasty decision. We know they've, they've scrutinized us for a little while, so <laughs> we're glad that we passed muster at least early on. Uh, John and Cindy, would you stand? We are delighted to have you folks with us. Let's sing it again. We love you with the love Would you bow in prayer with me again? Father, we're 
so very grateful for Randy Moss and for the time and energy he gave to us in camp, gave to you. And we pray for him, Father, in circumstances quite serious, as you know. And we're, we're grateful for the doctors and specialists at the St. Elizabeth's that they're able to help him. And we pray that he can have a full recovery and that he can reco recover maybe even sooner than expected. <coughs> And please be with his girls, be with Rachel and Raina and Riley, be with all of his family. <coughs> Thank you, Father, for their love and care and their pulling together as a family. And bless us all, strengthen us that we might help one another one more now. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our congregation is sending a check uh, for $500, and you might think, well, that sounds like a lot of money, but it's really not. Uh, and this whole situation has caught the family totally flat-footed. And so uh, Robin, Randy's sister, is kind of having to step in to help uh, micromanage a few things. Michelle's been really good about this, and so has Rod and everybody, all of them. Family, but uh, there may be a future need. We don't know how long Randy's going to be out of pocket, out of work, um, what it's going to be like when he does get off the heavy medication, and how quickly he's going to respond. But let's just look at this as a perhaps a, an opportunity to come to the aid of uh, a dear family within our congregation. And we're going to do as needed might require that uh, we are running uh, really tight with our budget. Uh, our offerings have been down for various reasons. Some are unemployed, some are employed in new jobs and they're struggling, and some are helping in family situations with ones that are unemployed. And it's, uh, it's been a little bit of a tough year, and even into last year, but together as a church, we can make it. And when you think about it, uh, all of us uh, have quite a few um, luxuries that if we really have to start looking at how we can help in a greater way, all of us uh, can do some looking and find ways that we can help out even more. Now, that's not why I'm up here for, for that, although I'm honored to be able to lead us in a prayer for Randy and welcome to the, to the Clarks. And this is probably discombobulated some of you. I know it did Stephen when, when I came in. He was like, but yeah, the songs you sent me, but are those, are those just for the sermon? Or what, how many songs are we going to have? It? So it's, it's going to be a different morning. I want to start with the sermon. And then as we go, we will weave some songs into the sermon. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time, and the fact that uh, Nick Wildman is out of town today kind of opened the door for, for uh, me to just uh, take it and run with it, and I uh, beg of you as we begin here, don't critique me as a song leader. I'm not one. Uh, I, I do love to sing. Maybe you can follow my voice somewhat. But don't be too critical or, or you'll really be disappointed with this. What I want us to try to do is capture the, the, the whole morning. And let's start with uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and then verses 15 through 20. And uh, uh, just at ease on that reading. Okay, It's not a typical Sunday, so we're going to excuse that reading for this morning. But I, I want to invite you, if you have your electronic device or your old-fashioned Bible, I think, which is also a dear thing still, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 and 20. Would you turn there? This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says, Therefore be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit, 
speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. One of the noticeable characteristics of our gathering is that we sing. And even the uh, uh, a cappella nature of it, the non-accompaniment, sometimes when we have visitors that come, they, they remark that we sing. Because in many churches, there's not a real assertive effort made to engage in singing. One of the notable characteristics of our gatherings as we try to reflect the early church is that we sing. And as I mentioned, we sing a cappella. This term, a cappella, is often translated as meaning without accompaniment. And it does, but in a kind of a roundabout way. The literal meaning of a cappella is a la chapel. A la chapel in the manner of the chapel. And this reaches back to earlier days, not, not necessarily talking there about first century, but earlier days of Christianity before, before instrumental music, uh, instrumental uh, uh, music was ever introduced into the worship. Let's look again at the wording of Ephesians 5, verses 18 and 19. What exactly does it mean when Paul says there to be filled with the Spirit? Do not get drunk with wine, he says, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. And then he goes on to elaborate, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and, and making melody with your heart to the Lord. The, the first century saints, that's when Paul wrote this letter, they lived in a day, a time, when the Holy Spirit worked in a, a variety of miraculous ways. I think most of us that are even uh, average students of the Scripture uh, recognize that observation. In the, in the context of a discussion regarding the misuse of speaking in tongues, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26. You might want to turn there. So, speaking in tongues was a miraculous gift that was given to some in the first century to expedite or to facilitate the proclamation of the gospel. So, Brian might be given the tongue of speaking Italian. Keith might be given the tongue of speaking uh, German. I, I don't know whatever language you, languages you had spread all across the Roman Empire. And even though they didn't speak that language uh, fluently on their own, somehow, I don't know how to explain it, somehow, in a miraculous way, God allowed them to speak a in a tongue another language that could be understood by some of those that were listening to the preaching of gospel and they could get it they could understand the gospel and then go home and teach it to their <coughs> kinsmen so in first Corinthians 14 and verse 26 tongues were being abused and it, 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 it was creating chaos people were flaunting their ability to speak in another tongue and totally disregarding what the whole point was what good does it do to speak Italian if, if nobody else uh, in the audience uh, understands what you're saying. So sometimes it might even be good to have an interpreter for, for the mass of the people, but uh, then those that are Italian can hear it firsthand in their language, but everybody else can also understand what you're saying. And, and for goodness sake, Paul's saying, when you do this, don't a bunch of you speak at the same time. All that will do is create utter chaos. So Paul writes, in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, when you assemble, when you gather, each one of you has a psalm or has a teaching, maybe a revelation, 
Some of you have a tongue. Some of you have the ability to interpret a tongue. But he says, concluding, let all things be done for edification. So the Holy Spirit poured out on the early Christians various gifts. Some we know could heal, some could raise people from the dead. Uh, lots of miracles were performed, and many of them had to do with the preaching of the gospel. And here it says, some of you have a song. Well, in a sense, uh, many of them came from the Hebrew people, from the Jews, and they all had a song. <laughs> but here we understand the context. There's something unique about this song. Some of you, so look at uh, back of a few verses, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15. Paul speaks of praying and singing with both the spirit and the mind. Now, if I tell you, let's really sing with the spirit today, you will probably understand me to be saying, let's sing with gusto. Let's sing like we really mean it. That's the way we use the word spirit today. But when Paul is saying here in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, pray with the spirit and pray with the mind, he's talking about this miraculous phenomenon. Like other gifts of the spirit, whether it was prophecies or revelations about the future or tongues or interpretations, songs were often inspired by God. Some people have an ability to write songs. I think Sandy's brother, Steve, has written a few hymns. And sometimes uh, I, I get a feeling, I get a, a, a sense of what I want to try to say, but I have no, no gift at all, uh, no natural instincts for writing a song. Not even the lyrics, much less the, the music to go along with it. Some people can do that today, but it's not, it's not because they're guided by the Holy Spirit. In the first century, there were people that just sang songs that were provided to them by God. In his letter to the church at Colossae, in Colossians 3 and verse 16, Paul writes words that are often considered to be a parallel to Ephesians 5, 19 and 20. Here's how Paul said it to the Colossians. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to the Lord. This in this text, Paul doesn't say to be filled with the Spirit. Instead, he says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. This, this answers for us a, a key question that I think needlessly perplexes many today in, in Christendom. And that is, how, how can I be filled with the Spirit? If, if we ask that question today, and many do, how can we be filled with the Spirit? There's a very simple answer to it, and it's a very biblical answer, and it's in Ephesians 5, 18, alongside of Colossians 3, 16. And the way we are filled with the Holy Spirit today, we let the Word of Christ richly dwell within us. Paul used the terms interchangeably. In the early days of Christianity, particularly during the first half of the first century, the church sang, William Barclay succinctly notes in his commentary on Ephesians 5, uh, 18 and following, he says the early church was a singing church. Uh, sometimes I think we're losing that. The believers sang psalms from the Old Testament collection of psalms. They sang hymns. And you might say, well, what, what was the difference between Saul and him? I don't know. There must have been some slight difference for Saul to use the terms, unless he was just trying to be repetitive. 
Paul says they say to sing songs and hymns. Let's just think of hymns as any songs that speak praises to God from any part of the Old Testament, not just the collection of psalms. And, and remember uh, that the New Testament was not yet fully revealed. It was just it was just beginning to be spoken and then recorded and collected. So this, the text says they were also to sing spiritual songs. They were to sing songs and, and hymns and spiritual songs. What do you mean spiritual songs? I'm not talking swing low, sweet cheery. I'm not talking a spiritual song like that. These spiritual songs were songs that were given to them by the Holy Spirit. They lived in a church in the day of the miraculous gifts of the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit provided them with songs to sing, as well as the Old Testament scriptures. They had psalms and hymns. Let's note also from Ephesians 5 and verse 19 that their singing was both a both a it, it, it was a form of speaking to one another. The verbiage, the language, the spoken words of our singing matters both to God and it matters to us. And I, I think that one of the frequent perils, at least an occasional peril, if not frequent, that comes when instruments are added to worship is this lessening or this loss of this speaking to one another. <clears throat> Perhaps by accident, without any intention, the instrumentation takes center stage and the spoken words seem to take a little bit of a back seat to, to some of the major players, we might say. I've been surprised, I mentioned to you last Sunday that I'm reading some from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a, a preacher, German preacher during the days of World War II, and I've, I've been surprised to find him writing on the subject of singing. He has a little book called Life Together, and here, let me just give you a few excerpts and hold on a little bit because we're getting ready to worship in song. He says, our earthly song is bound to God's revealing word in Christ Jesus. It is the simple song of the children of this earth who have been called to be God's children. It is not ecstatic. He's talking now for us in modern times. It is not in rapture, but it's sober. It is grateful. It is reverent. And it, it is addressed steadily to God's revealed word. And he's focusing here on Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. And as you do, you sing psalms and hymns, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Furthermore, Bonhoeffer, and not that he's the last word on it, but I'm, I'm finding his words very helpful. He says this, the heart sings because it, because it is overflowing with Christ. Where the heart is not singing, there is no melody. Our song on earth is speech. Bonhoeffer emphasizes it is the sung word. All devotion, all attention should be concentrated upon the word of the hymn. We do not hum a melody. We sing words of praise to God, words of thanksgiving, confession, and prayer. Thus, the music is completely the servant of the Word. It elucidates the Word. 
because it is bound wholly to the word, the singing of the congregation. Bonhoeffer makes a point that some may take issue with. It. He says essentially the singing is singing in unison. I don't know how much Bonhoeffer would appreciate tonight when we sing four part harmony. That's a different matter. I'm not going to debate that now. He's gone and can't defend himself on this. He's passed away. Finally, one, one, two more lines from him. It is the voice of the church that is heard in singing together. It is not you that sings. It is the church that is singing. And you, as a member of the church, may share in its song. <coughs> That's profound and is worthy of our thinking about a whole lot. Well, I want to emphasize uh, the songs in leading our singing this morning. Whenever, whenever they take out your song, uh, Stephen's got all of these on the screen, but I, I want to show you something. This is a great little tool uh, that, that all of us can use for different, uh, for different occasions. But, Look at, everybody look in the back. If you haven't handled a song book in a while, you remember how to do this. Go all the way to the back, to page 1039. And this is an index of scriptures appearing within the titles. Now let me, let me ask you to start with this. Which book of the Bible do you think gets more references in Psalms than any other book. Psalms, look at it. Uh, it starts there, there on the, it, 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 I went through every one of these. It just about drove me mad. I wrote down on my paper and I went back and I looked at every song and I tried to think of the Psalms that are tied in. But it, it, it's a beautiful tool. So I have relayed on, uh, relied on, on that tool. But that's helpful in the future if you're, if you're trying to think of something and you want to concentrate on a particular book, there you have a little index where some songs you can find out there. Now, put the song books away, because I know some of you have said, boy, this is cool. I'm going to look at this for the rest of the song. <laughs> no, you're not. If you do it, it'll be on the spot. One more comment, and then we'll expand our worship this morning. We've already been worshiping. We've had prayer and uh, we've sung a song, and, but we're going to expand our worship with more singing. The, the first century church was charged to engage in singing and making melody with their hearts. Marshall's Greek interlinear have the Greek on one line and then underneath it's the English. He gives a literal reading of Ephesians 5.19. It's a little bit awkward, but not too bad. Here's how he renders it. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and songs spiritual, singing and psalming with the heart, to singing and psalming with the heart of you to the Lord. Our translation says, singing and making melody in your heart. Literally, it's singing and psalming, psalming with the heart of you to the Lord. The term making melody is an effort on the part of the translators to try to capture the meaning of, of psalming. And this is part of where the source of contention among uh, Christendom as a whole, but even now within our brotherhood, some, some say, well, the word solo, this is the word solo. And the word solo spoke about plucking uh, the, the strings on the harp or the lyre, the, the, the other instruments, stringed instruments. So they want to use that to justify uh, instruments today. I, I, I don't buy that argument based on this word, especially because you'll notice that the instrument specified in this text, psalming with the heart, 
Now, there may be debate as to whether you can do that with or without an instrument. But here, Paul is rather explicit. He's, he's saying, pluck the strings of the heart. Most translations give that to us as you make melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3 and verse 16 helps us understand, understand this simple point. Uh, here there, Paul says, sing with thankfulness in your heart to the Lord. Sing. What does it mean to make melody in your heart? Well, Paul helps us. It's to sing with thankfulness in your heart to the Lord. Now, let me briefly summarize what we've noted so far. Just three little sub-points of instruction. Number one, our singing is a means of praise and edification. We speak to God. That's one reason we've all come together today, to praise God. But we also speak to one another. I'm not making that up. Paul said that was part of the design of our singing. Number two, the content of our singing or our song is provided by the Word of God as it's revealed by the Holy Spirit. Number three, our singing flows from our heart. Now I'm pointing to my chest and I don't mean that blood pumping organ. From our inner being, our heart, our mind, our, our soul. It's making melody with a heart that's filled with gratitude. Now, one more point, and this is a lesser point, and then we're about to begin our, our singing together and the rest of our worship this morning. Maybe just consider this a little a, a postscript. Maybe it's not such a little one. It's a small or a lesser point, but it can have significant ramifications. Have you ever been in an assembly where the congregation appeared to be singing half-heartedly? Haven't we all been in that situation? Have you? Sometimes we've been in situations where we feel like standing up and saying, what is wrong with us? Let's get with it, as Eileen Taylor would say in times past. Well, this might be depressing to us. You go to a visiting congregation, you sit there and you say, boy, these people, their heart is not in this. Not necessarily meaning that we sing to it all the time. But you notice that something's awry here, and that might be depressing to us, but have you ever thought about how insulting that might be to God? God's people gather together, and then they sing half-hearted. Maybe we better be thankful God doesn't strike us for our bad behavior, or we might all have the heels knocked off our shoes. And a genie had a friend one time that got struck by lightning and it knocked the it knocked the heels off of his cowboy boots. The hundredth psalm directs us this way. Shout joyfully to the Lord. Come before him with joyful singing. Now I recognize that that we all sing in a variety of ways. Some sing more loudly. Some of you sing more softly. We need to remember here that we are to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Keith has that tone of voice that sometimes when he speaks low and his head's down, I can't get what he's saying. And I'll I, I pick on him all the time, but I, I tell him, don't mumble. If you got something to say, stick your head up and say it. You know, so that if you're going to say something, say it so we can hear it. All right. If you're going to sing, sing so that we can hear it. At whatever level you choose to sing, maybe it's soft, maybe it's louder, it needs to be audible. That's not a Terry rule. That's a Paul rule. Speak to one, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. To 
To my knowledge, we are never directed in Scripture to whisper songs. I don't know that that's wrong, unless we do it all the time. Sometimes our song leader might like signal, let's be quiet on this one, just barely speak it. And sometimes the music, in the music it's written that we go softer with this particular verse or whatever. And sometimes that's for dramatic effect. You're singing loud and with great gusto, and then you come to one verse and everybody softens down and it really captures our attention. I'm not saying that's bad, but we're commanded to speak. And last but not least, kind of related to this, we, we must not mumble and surely better not grumble songs. We are to sing, to shout joyfully with thankfulness in our hearts to the Lord. Every first day, Stephen, is your Peter down here. Every first day, and for that matter, every day, <coughs> It's good to sing God's glory. So let's begin our worship here this morning, and I'm not at all uh, adept. I don't have good peripheral, and that's really the shortcoming here. I always get irritated when the song leader stands up here and he's looking this way half the time and looking this way. It's unnerving, I'll tell you that. Sometimes if high-tech churches that have it right in front of us all there. That would make it a little bit easier. Now, let's, let's just concentrate here. We've come together to worship God. And let's use these first songs without interruption. We'll just flow from one to the other as a, uh, a call to worship. In a a speaking from our hearts our, our love for God. I love you, Lord. Yeah. 
I've heard Saul. <coughs> I am a sheep and a
Good morning. We have now been a part of the worship with the opportunity to take the Lord's Supper and remember our Lord and Savior's death, burial, and resurrection. I appreciate that song, Hallelujah, what a Savior, being led. I think it's a good thought to prepare our minds to take the Lord's Supper this day. As the song stated, Jesus was perfect, and he died for each of us sinners. All of us imperfect creatures who sin and we fall short of God's glory. So only Jesus could be the sacrifice for each of us. In preparing our minds this day, I'd like to read from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, where we have an example of Christ's humility, and we need to Think upon this and do our very best to follow in what Christ has put before us. He has given us an example of humility here. Beginning in verse 5, it says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Let us go to God in prayer and pray for the bread. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we come to you this day as we remember our Lord and Savior's death, burial, and resurrection. As we prepare to take the bread which represents Christ's body, that he so willingly gave his life that day at Calvary on behalf of us sinners, Father. Help us to take this bread with the right attitude and with the right heart, Father, that we will do things in accordance with your will and do things that are pleasing and acceptable in your eyes. Father, help us never forget what Christ did when he gave his heavenly home, how he came to be an example for each of us. And the pain and agony he endured as he gave his life that day, but also the shame of the cross that he endured as well. Father, help us to do things that are important to you. Thank you again for Jesus, and we ask this prayer through Jesus' name. Amen.
realize when we set our minds back in time? When you died on the cross, and you know the shed your sins. You remember that, you know who was there, but you told us in the Bible that Jesus died for our sins. That's the something that represents that blood that was shed for us in this world. We thank you for that. Each of you. Now the opportunity to give back to God. Let's go to God in prayer again. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy great and glorious and wonderful name. Father, we thank you for this other day of life you've given to us. Thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, Father. Our health, our food, our clothing, our homes, all things we enjoy the very comfortable life upon this earth. Father, I that all blessings come from you, and without you we are nothing. We thank you most of all for the spiritual blessing we have through your Son, Jesus. As we give back to you this day, Father, help us to give back with the right heart. We'll give back cheerfully, not in necessity or grudgingly, and we'll give back in a way that will be, that will have purpose in our heart, and we'll give back that will show how thankful we are for all that you have done, how you Father, once again, we are so thankful for Jesus, and we ask this prayer through Jesus' name. Amen. Father.
tonight and the songs of light is strength and bravery. Our camp theme was I am not ashamed. We come home from camp and many of us are facing some really struggle. <coughs> Perhaps this week being very unique because of what's happened to Randy and Trudy and some others that are perplexed with serious problems, but uh, much of life is that way. And so we need to sing the songs because they speak to our condition. Let's sing some more from the songs. Son of my soul, thou sing.
difficult to swallow. Let us determine to rejoice in the Lord and to shine for Jesus. The scriptures tell us in various different ways that we're to be the light of the world. And we can be the light of the world because we are able to reflect Jesus in our own lives. These next three songs will serve as an invitation and if there are any who are ready to give your life to the Lord, uh, we invite you to let your desire be known and we will we'll be eager to assist you. Let's remain seated for, I tell you, let's stand for all three of these. You are the words of God, you say.
thankful for Terry and the work that they do with us. We thank you for the lessons that Terry provides to us each week. And we thank you for this lesson today, a reminder from your word of the importance of songs and psalms and hymns. We thank you for this blessing to be able to come together to sing these songs of praise to you to be strengthened by being one another. We're mindful, Lord, of so many that are sick and suffering. We especially pray that you can for Randy. We pray for his healing. Would you be with him and comfort him, be with his family, strengthen them, and help them to look to you in this time of difficulty. We pray that as we sang this morning, that the joy of Jesus will be seen in each of us as we leave this place and we'll be able to be others.